Some of the common issues encountered with adolescents are listed, as you can see. And um, I think the cartoon uh, kind of encapsulates um, the differences in communication. So we have to deal with hormonal changes, the developmental stage of the adolescent, perhaps their um, peer pressure, what they feel are expectations of adults, and the perception of their world, which, which is completely coloured by social media. Uh, moreover, they, they may also have um, difficulties understanding um, language or the tone of voice that may then lead to barriers in communication because of difficulty establishing rapport and building trust. So here you can see um, on each side the assumptions when dealing with adolescents, whether it's on the part of the healthcare professional or the young person. So the adolescent may feel that the physician is in a position of authority and therefore ought to know what the difficulties are that that adolescent is experiencing. They may also feel that the physician and the parents or guardians should be doing everything within their power to help the adolescent. But the adolescent, on the other hand, may take it for granted and may not feel that they need to cooperate. Um, they may also be going through very turbulent times during um, the different phases of adolescence and feel that it's completely unfair to be saddled with a chronic disease. So on the other end, um, looking at the healthcare professional, um, as you all know, it is difficult to uh, draw the adolescent out, particularly when they may be introverted, um, there may be cultural misalignment, and oftentimes um, uh, adults may take a, an authoritarian approach. So my first patient is Daphne. She was diagnosed with psoriasis uh, age six and was attending the National Skin Center where she was receiving topical medications for application to her skin. Three years later, her disease had progressed to become more severe, requiring the addition of oral medications. Uh, into her early teens, um, she developed arthritis associated with the psoriasis. Uh, however, she became lost to follow up as her mum had really quite grave concerns about the strong medications that she had been prescribed. So what are the ethical principles that risk violation? So mum's concern is that methotrexate uh, has been used as chemotherapy. And um, on her part, she feels that she's not doing her parental duties or obligations by not trying other alternatives. So the duty of care to the child from the uh, perspective of the healthcare professional is how to reconcile uh, mum's perception of what is in the child's best interest. So this requires the ability to uh, bring up um, the principles of what's in the child's best interest and how to do no harm. In her early teens, she was then referred um, from dermatology to pediatric rheumatology for her significant worsening joint pain. She was having difficulty writing and even walking. Um, and unfortunately, in 2014, uh, because the arthritis was affecting her hips, her sacroiliac joints, her finger joints, despite methotrexate, which had been converted to injections, and she had also been started on some oral steroids, uh, she was struggling with why she needed so many medications, weight gain, acne, and she felt ashamed of her disease. Um, she was also uh, advised to start a biologic treatment as it was felt that her current medications were inadequate. So the issues that the um, physician is grappling with include um, what to do since Daphne's mother has stopped bringing her for follow-up. 
And um, you know that the severity of arthritis will result in a very poor outcome with disability in a very young person in her early teens. So uh, there's a need for a lot more communication in order to be able to help the parents understand that effective interventions um, and mitigation of potential side effects will result in much better outcomes for Daphne and also how to mobilize support uh, for them to help um, them manage um, financial outlay. So looking at the quality of life, um, as you can see, uh, there are different things that we need to consider, physical, mental, social deficits uh, that Daphne might experience um, with or without treatment, and what are the biases that may prejudice the healthcare professional uh, in the evaluation of quality of life. So uh, some of the contextual features such as financial factors, um, which then touch upon the principles of justice and fairness. And then looking at Daphne herself, how does one help her? Because she's faced with chronic disease in a, in a young person. And naturally, um, it's not surprising that she would uh, deny this and try to avoid all the multiple medications. And um, the healthcare professional also needs to think about convenience of medications and how to optimize this. Um, how to then tap on charitable funding to source the biologic injection, and also how to manage the perception of the child, the parents, in considering the necessity and efficacy of medicines, and also being able to surface the conversation about traditional or alternative medicines. As we all know in Singapore, many patients access TCM, acupuncture, um, etc. in their quest for health and in their quest to avoid um, uh, concerns of side effects affecting the kidneys, the liver, etc. Um, and for a young person in particular, body image, how to uh, fit in with her, um, with her peers, we need to bring that up and discuss it as well. So on the brink of an uh, early adulthood at the age of 17, she's now working part-time in a bar. It's perhaps not, su not surprising that she's drinking from Wednesday to Saturday and also smoking quite a lot every day. And since she started s smoking, she's also coughing significantly. Um, there's also the issue of unprotected sex and she, because of her body image, she's now really seriously trying to lose weight. She's also figured that um, the etanercept, the biologic injections are effective. And in trying to manage all her medications, she stopped taking the methotrexate. So because of the unprotected sex and some of her symptoms, um, she is referred to gynecology. And, uh, and is given antibiotic treatment for sexually transmitted diseases. So how do we join up the dots between childhood and adulthood? What happened in between? And um, so the pediatric rheumatologist consults the adult rheumatologist to say, I need your help to look after adult problems. So what do you see as potential gaps that may arise from this transition of care? So who can help to join up the dots? So here I bring up the basic principles of interprofessional collaboration. Um, the healthcare team has a responsibility to ensure that patients receive the right care at the right time from the right providers. So in order for this to happen, a few things have to come together. First of all, the different stakeholders need to understand that they are all part of a very diverse team. And it's easy to say that there should be effective communication, but not so, hard, not so um, easy to do in a busy day. But essentially, everybody has to be on the same page. Um, number three, uh, there needs to be a limitation of duplication. And also, how do we all work together to optimize care? so that 
there are not um, gaps and the patient's experience may be experienced as seamless. So as we look at transition of care, um, as you can see, there are two lists on either side. On the left, uh, the physician needs to think about timing of transfer of care. And yet you do not want to do it at one juncture because this is likely to fail, right? So it should be a, a process over a period of time, possibly a year, um, to introduce the uh, adolescent um, to the adult physician. Uh, we need to consider does Daphne have capacity to understand and make decisions and um, enable that, slowly give more weight to um, engaging her and asking her for what she thinks and what she's comfortable with. Uh, and bringing in the concept of how to protect herself, um, emphasizing that there's confidentiality and um, how much parental involvement and how to wean this down over time. For the adolescent, uh, various things that they will obviously be grappling with include their body image, and um, establishing a new relationship with a, a new healthcare provider, how to navigate the terrain of adult healthcare, and increasingly so asserting autonomy. So she's referred, um, but she doesn't hit adult rheumatology until more than a year later, uh, even though um, efforts had been made to reach out to her. So when I met her, she was studying at high school and planning to go to the polytechnic. She shared that she was an only child, closer to her father, working part-time at weekends at Far East Plaza, selling accessories, and much happier because her skin and joints are good. Um, she did uh, tear up, however, when she recalled a period of time when she was forced to be in a wheelchair because of really quite severe bilateral groin pain. The most striking thing to me when I examined her was this very large tattoo covering her thigh. So this is not her actual tattoo because that was far, far more extensive. But this was a snippet of my conversation with her. Um, and um, she said that she was actually really pleased because I was commenting on the colours and how beautiful it was and how it must have taken a long time for it to be done. Um, and then uh, I remember being quite struck by it. Although now looking back, um, it's, it's kind of obvious because she actually said, I got it to cover my skin because the psoriasis was so very bad. Um, and, uh, and she was just so delighted with it. But more the fact, I think, that I actually spent quite a bit of time talking about it and its impact on her and, and what, surround, what was the backstory behind it. So she, she then opened up and shared about her previous communication um, with, uh, with her, her team in the pediatric clinic. And as you read through this, um, what do you think was the message she was receiving with the above statements? So I'll just leave you to ponder that. Uh, and then uh, move on to the next slide. So her, we then spoke about her growing pains and um, how her illness had affected her, what were the different stressors in her life, and what were her goals, and um, who was a support network, and how did she make choices. In August of 2018, she had a very bad flare of psoriasis affecting um, her face, her scalp, her limbs, her trunk, pretty much everywhere. Uh, she was waitressing as well, and she had actually stopped her, her medication, which was cyclosporin, because she was very worried about the drug interaction between cyclosporin and alcohol. When I asked her about how she was coping, she mentioned that she started cutting herself. Um, and, uh, and then subsequently, um, because she was quite desperate because of her rash, uh, she asked for the provision of a memo 
for her school to allow her to um, not wear her school uniform so that she could cover up her arms and legs in view of the rash. So with regard to the cutting, she basically declined any help. Um, and uh, when I explored about um, what emotional support she got from her parents, she felt really quite alienated because she felt that their focus was mostly on her stopping smoking and alcohol. So what is conflict? It is the interaction of interdependent people who perceive incompatible goals and interference from each other in achieving these goals. So you see in the little cartoon, you see the tiny little section on facts followed by the much larger um, covering of assumptions. And finally, finally, um, the mountain of judgment over that. So uh, just something for you to consider. So how would you approach the communications with your parents? So there's uh, obviously an element of confidentiality and probably talking with Daphne about what she's comfortable um, for me to share with her father would lay the ground rules. There needs to be shared decision making, not just between her and me, but involving the parent and also involving other people whom she may actually um, get, uh, garner um, emotional support from, such as the social worker, the rheumatology nurse, and even a helpline or a patient support group. So here we see uh, some of the issues that both sides are having to deal with. Um, and uh, I think it's good to think through them because then it gives a framework to work within.